Well, hello everyone and welcome to The Horse Snob. My name's Michael James. I am The Horse Snob. Here today with another Fresh Frights selection for you. This time a movie you would have seen in the theaters. A big budget, big cast kind of thing. The movie in question, the one we're going to be talking about today, The Invisible Man. Now finally available on HBO for those of you with cable subscriptions and HBO Max, of course, for those of us who prefer streaming. A solid, big budget movie, as I said, headed by a great crew on the back end, produced by Jason Blum, a name that has a lot of credibility in the horror world these days, having been involved with things like Insidious, the Saw series, Paranormal Activity, and on and on. Director, writer on this, Lee Wanell. Talking about Saw alum, this dude is at the heart of it. A guy who was not only involved with Saw right from the onset, but was also an actor in the very first episode of that series, he portrayed Adam. These two working hand in hand, putting out a new version of The Invisible Man, the original H.G. Wells horror movie from about 1930, 1933, I think. But reality is, you watch this thing, it really feels more like a remake of the early 2000s version of Invisible Man called Hollow Man that starred Kevin Bacon. Really following along the same lines, that narcissistic, manipulative, psychopath kind of thing that Kevin Bacon had. Now it's Oliver Jackson Cohen instead. A dude who you probably remember as being the older version of Luke from the Netflix series The Haunting of Hill House along with Aldous Hodge and Elizabeth Moss, who you probably recognize her from The Handmaid's Tale, put together for a solid trio on screen. But again, this thing feels maybe a little bit too much like Hollow Man. So despite their solid chops, despite what they're able to bring to their characters, this also doesn't really feel very original, doesn't feel very impactful. It feels more like a really good film that was also sort of a throwaway. The storyline, the premise, doesn't differ at all really from things like Hollow Man. A genius level dude who's got some serious mental issues going on. Very abusive relationship with the wife. He pretends to commit suicide so he can slowly toy with her emotions, her life, a little bit at a time. Tearing her apart, this broken human being who he's already been tearing apart for years. Things as they always do continue to trickle, getting worse and worse and worse, until she's finally put into a corner and has to defend herself. A well-shot film, decent script, well-acted, well-directed, but nothing original. Nothing really new to the many variations of this story we've already been shown before. You take guys like Jason Blum, Lee Wanell, who have provided us things that were completely original, completely new. Things that blew our minds and did so well, they built series off of these things. Six, seven, eight movies and going. Paranormal Activity, Saw. But this one is just lackluster a bit. Perhaps one of those rare times where expectations, knowing who was involved, ended up being a little misleading to what the final product actually was. A good movie that's worth a watch, but don't expect to be blown away. I fight to try and give it a lower grade. I have to at least give it a B plus because of the quality, because of who's involved. They all did an excellent job in their roles. It just wasn't that original. It wasn't something we haven't seen before. An unfortunate letdown in that area. All right. That's it for me today. As always, I invite you to take a moment, hit that subscribe button and the bell. Stay up to date with reviews like these and so much more coming out, including my breakdown of the top 100 films for you for Halloween. My name's Michael James. I am the Horror Snob. As always, I thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.